30 years on, I, I'm, I'm guessing... 32 since yeah, we made quite, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. Of course, that's the strange thing, isn't it? I, I, I suppose it's almost... It, 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 it should be this way, that a film like that, which is all about ducking and diving and bobbing and weaving, took a couple of years to actually come to fruition after it got made, didn't it? Yeah, well, absolutely it did. Um, I, I remember, we've just been talking about this in the bar, that I, I think it was eventually George Harrison and Handmade yeah. Films that, that saved the project, because I... Um, it was shelved for quite a while, and uh, so my memory of it is being a film set in the 70s, but of course it's now regarded yeah. as a great 80s film because of all those scenes of you know, selling the stuff yes. in the Docklands. So it's interesting that those scenes were shot then, that, that people were trying to sell off London even yeah. back in the 70s, you know. Um, it's 32 years, a hell of a long time, and uh, I, I'm really looking forward to seeing it tonight because about every 10 years you go to an event yeah. uh, celebrating this film and so far every time it has seemed as fresh as, as the day we first saw well, it. That's, that's the trick, isn't it? It is, and I think that's true with a lot of yeah. great films, really. I'm, lo I'm, I'm thinking, is there going to be a day when we watch it and go, well, that's, you know, that's just really old-fashioned now, it doesn't work. Well, then people do that. <clears> this is what you, tw number 21 in the BFI's 100 greatest is that British right? films. Yeah. Now, of course, that will be in and around films made, you know, that'll be Powell and Pressburg, and, and, and so they'll be stuck around the 30s and 40s. Yeah. People don't talk about those as having... Are being sort of like aged, do they? They're kind of classics. No. So what, you can have modern classics, can't you? You should be able to have modern classics. I think you can have modern classics, and I think probably what defines them is that I remember when The Long Good Friday came out is people said there's going to be a thousand films like The Long Good Friday yeah. now. And of course, that is easier said than done. Sure. And there's a lot of films that have tried to be The Long Good Friday, but none that have just that enduring mix of, of action, of London at that time, yeah. of the politics, mm -hmm. and of course the great thing that every uh, uh, film needs is character, sure. and of course a cracking script. Yeah. When you get that with the incredible casting, oh, well, of course, in the movie, even in the tiny roles. We swim it out, same <laughs> Actually, this is intriguing about this, because seeing a, a, a group of faces, well-known faces, are well-known faces now, Yeah. but at the time, I guess <laughs> you're all looking at each other and saying, I don't, I don't know you, have we ever met, aren't you? you? A lot of new boys at the time. Well, a lot of new boys, and uh, you know, since since the film's made, you know, we've seen each other over the years. We've yeah. had our careers, and we, you know, we're all we're all middle to late middle aged actors now. But at the time, you know, that this was often for us. This was a for most of us, I would imagine, was our first small part yeah. in a in a really independent, completely yes. English film. You know, I'd been I'd had a small part in a James Bond film, you know, which is sort of Universal Pictures, so it's it's American really. Um, this was like, wow, is this the future? I mean, sadly. It wasn't the future no. of the British film industry, which is a shame. But it is it is great to know that when those landmark films are made, you know that you were in one yeah, of them. Exactly yeah. right. Yeah. Um, do you, I, do you I, have I, that memory of it like that? I mean, uh, is it is it easy to think back and, 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 and physically remember what the experience was like at the time? <clears throat> I, it is it is for me because it was the first time I'd been in a, a feature out on the streets of London. Right. Making something that was quite edgy, rather than maybe some of the safe television that you'd done. Um, I, you know, I obviously had no idea that it was going to be the, the, the enduring yes. success it is, but there was definitely a feeling that it was new because it was, it was touching on, it was mixing the gangsters and, and the, poly, the IRA, the IRA yes. together, which was, seemed really sort of daring and brave yeah. at the time, and that still is in a way. Um, of course, it was, it was quite a low budget, so I remember, you know, there was no hanging around in trailers and stuff. I remember in the scene that uh, at the very beginning that I, I shot with Paul Freeman, yeah. you know, in between shots, we sat in the pub. Could have been a disaster. Maybe, <laughs> like, but we sat in the pub and then, you know, I got a bus home, I think. So, that, you know, this is long really? before the days of trailers and limousines picking oh, you up. No, I think, they, I think they said, turn up at this pub in Hackney um, at eight o'clock and we'll start shooting. So, you know, it was, it was made very efficiently on a low budget. Right. Um, but, uh, no, of course you didn't know uh, what it was going to be like. Um, I did get the sense, though, when I read my scenes, because as Carl Hamill will tell you, we were just talking about the fact that we never read a script. Carl said that you kind of got your bits. We got sent, and I think story. it's because it was a sort of a work in process, right. and, they, and they, were, they were busy writing and think, well, no, just give them the scenes they're going to film tomorrow, you know. So we couldn't get a sense of it, but when you actually did your scenes, you just thought, this just seems to have a quality. Yeah. 
that maybe the other stuff that I'm getting offered, I'm doing, you know, doesn't have, you know. I think that's so definitely some, was yeah, the Barry Keyes thing always strikes. Well, me also, so crucial, also for the people the like me and Carl, Barry was a really, really big thrusting name yes. in the theatre. He'd written some amazing plays, so you thought, oh wow, film's taking Barry Keith. It seemed to have like a a feeling that, that, that a lot of really good new talent yes. was being drawn from all over England to make yeah. this film. So that that was a sense in which it felt different, yeah. Are you, are you a man who watches stuff back? Are, are you comfortable uh, watching film? In other words, I, I'm thinking, uh, when you saw the whole thing, did you think, oh, glad I was in this, this is good stuff? Yeah, I was, but interestingly enough, tonight is the first time I'm ever going to see my performance. Because, no. uh, yeah, because uh, I am um, famously uh, a bit late getting to places. And, uh, uh, I've always, the four times, the beginning, and there's been three like uh, revisits to it, all four times I've been late, and I'm, d I'm dead before the titles. So yes. I've never actually, I can't even remember what the scene is. I think it's something about trying to pick up Paul Freeman in a bar. So I'm very excited tonight. I'm going to see my performance in Longwood Friday for the first time. I, I, I can only hope that in the cinema you stand up, you raise your hands, and acknowledge the I moment. Should, bloody <laughs> marvellous! That's that good. You can go into yourself after 30 odd years. 32 years, absolutely. Two I did. Right as well. Brilliant. Thanks for your time. Thank you, mate. Right. Cheers. Thank you.